Many people, including Christians, believe that God helps those who help themselves. Is this true? Find out next here on Pursuing the Savior. What is going on? My name is Archie and welcome to Pursuing the Savior. I'm a pastor and a writer and I have a passion for helping people understand the Bible and find their way back to God. And that's what this channel is all about. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about the famous quote, God helps those who help themselves. We're going to find out where it comes from, why it's problematic, and what does the Bible actually teach. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing and hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a thing. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to like or follow our official Facebook page, Assuming the Savior. Let's get started. In a Barna study conducted in 2017, 52% of Christians believed that the Bible teaches the saying, God helps those who help themselves. Pinapatunayan lang ng pag-aaral na ito kung gaano nakababa ang ibinagsak ng biblical literacy ng church. And we're supposed to not only live by bread, but from every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Saan nga ba nagmula ang katagang ito? Most people attribute this phrase to Benjamin Franklin, isa sa mga founding fathers ng United States of America. Doon sa kanyang libro na inilalathala taon-taon, yung Poor Richard's Almanac, particular yung issue noong 1757, doon unang nailathala ang katagang ito. Bagamat naniniwala sa Diyos itong si Benjamin Franklin, ay ang kanyang paniniwala ay ang Diyos ay hindi actively involved sa buhay ng mga tao, kundi siya ay Diyos na lumikha, hinayaan na lang ang kanyang nilikha at nanonood na lang siya mula sa malayo. Watching from a distance, kumbaga. However, a much more careful study will reveal that it was actually Algernon Sidney, isang English politician, ang unang gumamit ng katagang ito. Siya ay isang English politician at noong 1698 ay isinulat niya sa kanyang article na pinamagatang Discourses Concerning Government ang mga katagang God Helps Those Who Help Themselves. And you gotta take note, Mr. Sidney was not a theologian. He was a politician. Therefore, ang talagang ugat o pinagmula ng katagang ito ay hindi nag-aaral ang Biblia kundi isang politiko. What does it imply? Ano ba yung itinuturo o ipinapahiwatig ng kasabihang ito? From the surface, makikita natin, hindi naman siya masamang idea. Somehow, ay parang good idea nga siya, especially kung wala tayong biblical grounding. Ang ibig sabihin ay, kailangan meron muna tayong gawin. We have to start somewhere bago tayo humingi ng tulong sa Diyos. Dapat ay meron muna tayong ginagawa bago tayo lumapit sa Diyos at bago ang Diyos ay tumingin sa atin at bigyan tayo ng tulong. Sa madaling salita, try to do good and God will help you. And the question is, why is it problematic? Well, it's problematic because even if Christians, some Christians believe that it is part of the Bible, but the fact of the matter is that it's not found anywhere in the Bible. Kahit ating halukayin yung mga wisdom books like Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and even Psalms. Unfortunately, hindi po natin mahanap ang katagang ito And there's nothing in the Bible that resembles the teachings of this saying. Ang nagiging problema dito is that kailangan meron muna tayong gawin at dahil doon, tayo yung source o pinagmumulan ng kalakasan at hihingi lang tayo ng tulong kapag hindi na natin kaya. In other words, nagiging parang second place na lang ang Panginoon imbes na siya yung nauuna sa ating buhay. Kung makikita nyo po, ay ibinabaligtad ng term na ito yung intended order ng Panginoon pagdating sa paggawa ng mga bagay. So ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin, what does the Bible say? Una, without God, we are completely helpless. Ganito ang sinasabi sa Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. To begin with, we are all infected with a virus called sin, which is lawlessness, and a violation of God's holiness and His righteous commands. 
No human being is exempted from this fallenness or this virus, regardless of age, race, language, or social status, lahat tayo infected dito sa virus na ito. Although meron po tayong sariling standard ng mabuti at masama, let's say, itong taong to mabuti, ang taong to masama, pero ang accurate na measurement ng kabutihan ay walang iba kundi ang standard ng Panginoon. Siya ang magsasabi kung ano ang tama, kung ano ang mali, at hindi po tayo. Number two, even our best effort is not enough. Meron tayong mindset na kung tayo ay gumagawa ng mabuti, o kung mas marami yung ginagawa nating mabuti, kesa sa masama, ay kalulugan tayo ng Panginoon. Unfortunately, ay hindi po ganon ang sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. Tingnan po natin ang Isaiah 64 verse 6. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. Bakit hindi sapat ang ating best effort? It's because of our fallen nature. Mula dun sa number one, may problema na po tayo. We are infected by the virus called sin. And because of that, everything that we make or everything that we do is infected by that sin. Number three, God helps the helpless. Tignan po natin yung Isaiah 25 verse 4. For you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress, a shelter from the storm, and a shade from the heat. The Bible tells us that God is close to those who are oppressed, to the widows, to the orphans. In other words, yung mga helpless. There are people in the world who are utterly helpless. Ito yung mga taong talagang nandun sa mga sitwasyon na yon, and we can't even relate to them completely because hindi natin nararanasan kung ano yung nararanasan nila. Sila yung mga taong na wala ng trabaho, na wala ng mahal sa buhay, yung mga walang tahanan, yung pati yung pagkain ay problema pa. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're not helping themselves, but sometimes nandun lang sila sa sitwasyon na napakahirap talaga and they have no one else to turn to but God. Now this verse gives us hope. Na kahit gaano pa kababa yung ating ibinagsak, kung gaano makahirap ang ating pinagdadaanan, kung tayo ay titingala lang at magtitiwala sa Diyos, hihingi ng tulong sa Kanya, tayo ay makakatanggap ng tulong. In other words, God helps those who cannot help themselves. Number four, God helps those who seek Him. Tingnan po natin ang Hebrews 11 verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. Since God is our Maker, He is concerned about us, every single one of us. And if we are to receive help from Him, eh kailangan lumapit tayo sa Kanya with all humility and in faith. The first barrier that needs to be taken down is unbelief. Kailangan nating maniwala na totoo ang Diyos. Dahil kung hindi tayo naniniwala na may Diyos, para saan pa at tayo hihingi ng tulong mula sa Kanya? However, mere intellectual agreement that God exists is not enough. It's one way to believe that God exists, but to trust God and commit your life to Him is another. The substance of this verse is that God is knowable by evidence and logic. If we are to come to Him, kailangan nating lumapit sa Kanya ng buong pagpapakumbaba at pagtitiwala. Because if we believe that He cares about us, we must understand na lahat ng Kanya ginagawa ay ultimately para sa ikabubuti natin. Kahit mahirap, kahit hindi natin naiintindihan, we must believe that all things work together for our ultimate good. Number five, Jesus died for the helpless. Tignan po natin yung Romans 5. Verse 6. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Take note. Christ did not die because we did good or we did more good than we did evil. Instead, Christ died while we were still wretched sinners. Yun po ang katotohanan. Minsan kinu-question natin ng Diyos kung talaga ba mapagmahal siya. Ang mantra natin ay, Kung talaga mapagmahal ang Diyos, bakit niya hahayaan na ako'y dumanas ng ganito? Bakit hindi na lang niya gawing magaan ng lahat para sa akin? Bakit kailangan ko pang dumanas ng ganitong paghihirap kung pwede naman niya akong tulungan agad? Eh di sana wala nang nahirapan. 
Kung ganun po tayo mag-isip, ang ibig sabihin ay nakakalimutan po natin ang katotohanan na tayo ay namumuhay sa isang mundo na isinumpa ng Diyos dahil sa kasalanan. Tao ang nagkasala, pero guess what? Sino ang gumawa ng paraan para mapanumbalik tayo sa tamang relasyon sa Diyos at para ma-reverse yung mga epekto ng kasalanan? Hindi ba ang Diyos din naman? How? By sending His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, a brutal death, a criminal's death, para sa atin, if we believe in Him. Friends, that is the ultimate expression of love. There is no love greater than to lay down one's life for His friends. At yun po ang ginawa ng Panginoong Jesus para sa atin. In conclusion, While we tend to believe that God helps those who help themselves, but the Bible teaches the exact opposite. God does not exist to make life easy for us. But as His created beings, we are commanded to honor God and to give Him glory. Truth be told, this world cannot provide the deepest needs of our souls. Only God can through Jesus Christ. Bilang mga Kristiyano, we were designed to be branches. But unless we are connected to the vine, which is Jesus Christ, we can do nothing. We can do nothing on our own. God is our constant helper. In sickness and in health, He's always there for us. And yes, He makes all things work together for our good. That is, if what we're doing is according to to His divine sovereign will. Nothing more, nothing less. I hope naging pagpapala po sa inyo ang video ng ito at nagkaroon po tayo ng mas malinaw na pagkakaunawa sa terminology na God helps those who help themselves. At kung sa tingin nyo po ay nakakatulong ang ministering ito sa inyo, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and following our official Facebook page. And with that, my friends, I'll see you on the next one.